broke his silence. He invited the editorial directors of the main media houses to share his feelings on Deputy President William Ruto as well and the BBI judgment, among other critical national issues. But we start on his response on the BBI, BBI appeal judgment. And it is most unfortunate, like I keep saying, that people have forgotten why we were looking at this. And for short-term political gain, have decided to deny Kenyans of what is legitimately in their interest. Because let me ask, one of the things that we used to talk about and we used to say, when you have a situation, if you go into our informal settlements and you go into a lot of these other areas, why do you have such tension? Why do you have such poverty? Then you get and you find out. Because it is both about representation, but it is also about resources. Because when we introduce CDF, CDF we are also attached to the constituency. So when you have an honorable member of parliament receiving 100 million shillings and another one receiving 100 million shillings, one is distributing 100 million shillings to 50,000 people. Another is distributing 100 million shillings to 1 million people. Is that equity? Is that child in Madare or Kibera? Will he ever have an opportunity ever of going to university if the highest bursary he can ever receive is 5,000 shillings? And we said, if we don't deal with some of these issues, people will consistently feel pent up. And that is why we said, let us actually focus ourselves on this. Let us do it. It was not about who was going to be president, who was not going to be president. Who How many times have I told you people, I am very grateful to the almighty God and the people of Kenya for the opportunity they've given me. I am more than happy to serve out my time and finish my program. But I also believe that this is part of my agenda, to be able to bring people together and to be able to ensure that we have a peaceful, stable, united country. And that is why I was very keen on this. Unfortunately, the courts have ruled the way they have ruled, and I believe that uh, they have been highly misguided in that process. Unfortunately, we have had politicians, like I'm saying, for short-term political gains, who have deviated from why we wanted the BBI to it being an issue of competition. And I don't know why, because all of these people, I mean, they, they, I was hearing some people say, I see this BBI is to propel Raila Odinga. Raila Odinga declared his presidency with or without BBI, and he's still on the ticket. BBI has nothing to do with his candidacy. BBI has nothing to do with Uhuru wanting to continue because there is no clause in BBI that says that the incumbent president is going to continue for another 10 years. There is no clause. This is all propaganda and hype that is built around to poison the people's minds and to deviate them from looking at the real facts. Because at the end of the day, who are the people who suffer when we have these po political problems? It is not the elite, it is the masses. Who are the people who are denied resources when we don't deal with these issues of inequity? It is the people, not the elite. But somehow now, you will now want to blame poverty on that class as opposed to that class. Instead of dealing with the fundamental root cause of the problem, which is providing resources, giving opportunities to every Kenyan equally and fairly, you want to now make it an us versus them because it's an easy campaign platform, right? To propel an individual to victory as opposed to dealing with the underlying problem facing a nation. So, ladies and gentlemen, all I can say is it is unfortunate. Uh, I am a person who has always respected the rule of law. I always told you, and even when they said, uh, that we are going to take, I said when I was uh, vying for my very first time, that regardless of whether I'm chosen by or elected or not elected, I will still obey the uh, International Criminal Court. I don't speak what I don't mean. You have seen, I proved myself. I was elected and I still appeared because I believe in the rule of law. When they went out and they said my election was null and void, I accepted, moved on. 
and even this one, I will accept and move on. I don't agree with it because I believe we have denied Kenyans their resources, we have denied Kenyans equity, we have denied funds to go machinani through the ward fund, which to me is actually a much more equitable way of ensuring mtoto wa machinani ameweza kupata elimu ya university kuliko CDF. All right? So this is what Kenyans have lost. I, Uhuru, have not lost anything. Just the, 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 the feeling of, 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 of sadness that we could actually, for political reasons, deny our own people something that would have not only improved their lives and livelihoods, but made Kenya that much more a cohesive society. So um, in terms of uh, where do we go from here? Well, I'm not the only proponent of uh, these changes. I will not give up. I always believe that uh, one must fight for those things that he believes in, whether in office or out of office. I will continue to fight and advocate for those things that I believe in. And I believe strongly that as a country, we need to be fair. I need believe we need to be able to shed this ethnic umbrella that we always say that so and so, because at the end of the day, we're all Kenyans and we need each other. Your child and your child and your child needs an education, needs access to health, needs good roads, just like any other child in any other part of the world. You're entitled to it. And it is my hope and my prayer that like-minded people who believe in these fundamental principles and who believe and see Kenya long into the future and not within the context of their political life, yeah? We'll continue to advocate for these things until we have a much more fairer and much more just society. So as of now, like I said, that is where we are. We have a ruling, we obey, and we move on and we continue to consult with people who think the same as we do. And we will continue to work together to see that we overcome these challenges and uh, get the Kenya that we want to, to see, that we want our children to inherit. It is not my duty, nor is it my responsibility to tell people or to tell Kenyans how or where they should vote. But it is my duty to remind Kenyans that they need to look at who they vote for and why they are voting for that particular person. And like I'm saying, it is unfortunate that within and amongst us, there are those who will sacrifice interest over personal political agendas. And I believe these are the things that Kenyans need to look for. But at the end of the day, it is not for me to dictate to Kenyans who to elect. It is for Kenyans to decide what is in their best interest. And my hope and my prayer is that they would do that in a manner that looks after, not their short-term interests, but their long-term survivability as citizens, and the long-term stability of our nation. That's not all from the head of state. A new war front between President Uhuru Kenyatta's allies and Deputy President William Ruto is clearly emerging with ICTCS Joe Musheru now accusing the DP of uh, hoodwinking the youth in the name of God. Musheru says the DP has desecrated the pulpit by turning it into a political podium and spewing falsehoods. The DP Ruto has dismissed the CS, saying as long as he was talking about the youth, he was speaking his language. NTV senior political affairs reporter Kennedy Moravi has more. Here, we have a lion. The road to the 2022 elections is getting slippery. Uh, you have heard him speak. ICT Cabinet Secretary Joe Musheru has given a glimpse of what may be sentiments from his fellow Cabinet Secretaries in the days to come. The CS says Deputy President William Ruto's hustler narrative is a big scam. The suffering that many of our youth are going through has unfortunately made some of them easy prey for all manner of political shatterlands who are promising to take them to heaven if they elect them. These are false promises made by false prophets and we all know how it will end in tears and frustration. 
The attacks also opening doors to what may be a vicious battle for the souls of the youth in the run-up to the 2022 general election. According to C.S. Mosheru, D.P. Ruto, in God's name, has often used the pulpit to preach how his government will speak to the needs of the youth, yet it's only aimed at advancing his political agenda. Many people have been using the name of God in all manner of uh, places, saying things that, in my view, are not necessarily true. To thank God the Father that we did not have uh, money to the counties cannot possibly be correct. Why would God not want us to have money in the counties? Why would God not want us to have, uh, you know, in terms of uh, youth getting the seven-year tax holiday? Why would God not want us to have uh, the youth uh, commission so that the youth can take more control, more charge of uh, their lives? Musheru accusing the DP of being a sheep in wolves' skin. Remember that not everyone who proclaims their religion by shouting from the mountaintops, Buana Asifiwe and hallelujahs at every opportunity means well. For some, their actions betray them. Musheru hitting out at his boss of being a master liar, especially to the youth by promising a heaven on earth. I have been engaging with youth and every day we have conversations. They are suffering, but they are being cheated every day by people. By people. And they are being cheated. And really, it's not fair. So that's why I'm actually angry. And I'm saying, you know, kill money. People must know the truth. The CS who has declared he will not be joining politics after his tenure in cabinet, also accusing the church of being complicit in Ruto's power games induced with loads of money. The main problem, as I see it, is that these churches have been silenced by, say, massive donations from politicians who have been gifted with the pulpit to preach the gospel sometimes of division and to nudge citizens towards a class war. These Bible-waving politicians have especially targeted the youth because they think wrongly that the youth are gullible and easy to manipulate. In fact, Musheru says the DP betrayed the president at his hour of need. Having worked extremely closely with the president, some of his closest friends are the ones that are fighting him the most because he chose not to allow this country to be plundered. Earlier youth spoke here talking about everything is about money and what people can actually get out of money. And so when you stop people from doing some of these things, they become your worst uh, critics and they want to fight you and they want to stop you from the direction that you're going. Dipiruto, who met leaders from Western Kenya in Naivasha today, however, laughed off the attacks from the CS, saying he was now speaking his language. I do not wish to respond to those uh, who are uh, criticizing what we are doing because we believe that uh, criticism is not entirely a bad thing. At least they are recognizing that we are having a conversation, which is good enough. According to the CES and most of the people who are at this particular function, the youth are 70%, and getting them on your side is a sure victory in 2022. Kennedy Moreidi, NTV in Limuru, Kiambu County. And yes, the war front doesn't end there, and the president has sent his most direct and clear message yet to his deputy president, William Ruto, to quit. In any decent civilized society where people disagree, yeah, all right, uh, the honorable thing that leaders do is to say, I disagree with the policies of this government, and therefore I wish to disassociate myself from them, and you tender your resignation. I wish this is what people would also do, you know, because as they say, you can't live in a glass house and also throw stones. You're in the same house and you're also throwing stones to demolish it, right? Okay? Uh, I have tried as much as possible to make sure that everything that we do, I keep everybody also within government involved and even some of those people who are criticizing have been part and parcel, yeah? And this is why I'm saying it's very unfortunate, yeah? But like I want to reiterate, you know, uh, I have a, an agenda that I was uh, elected on, and, 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 and that work must continue. And it would be really the honorable thing that if you are not happy with it, right, that you would actually you know, uh, 
step aside and allow those who want to move on, move on, and then take your agenda to the people, which is what happens in any normal you know, democracy, because you can't have your cake uh, <laughs> and, 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 and eat it, yeah? You know, you can't on the one hand say, I'm not going, and because I, at the same time, I don't agree. You know, you, you've got to decide, because you, you must be principled in, 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 in that endeavor, yeah? The president also spoke about the plans to face the COVID-19 pandemic in Kenya, and that's what we'll be getting into in a moment. But let's get the status update on that. Kenya has received its first batch of the Moderna COVID-19 vaccine and what the Ministry of Health calls a boost to the ongoing vaccination drive that targets to vaccinate 10 million people by the end of the year. With the country rushing towards getting majority of the population vaccinated, another rush to beat today's vaccination deadline for civil servants was on. Several civil servants showed up today to avoid facing disciplinary action. Just at the break of dawn, the latest batch of vaccine arrived at the Jomo Kenyatta International Airport. This load, 880,460 doses of Moderna COVID-19 vaccines is a donation from the U.S. government. Kenya says that it has revised its vaccine deployment plan, taking into consideration the availability of multiple vaccines with an aim of vaccinating 150,000 people each day before the end of September. Even as we scale up our vaccination program, we remain focused on the objective of ensuring that we protect those who are at the greatest risk of infection. And these are specifically our frontline workers and those with the highest risk of losing their lives. We likewise would encourage Kenyans to get vaccinated with any and all vaccines that are available. It's important to note that this vaccine donation is in addition to our support to Kenya's COVID-19 response through laboratory testing, through supplies and equipment, training for healthcare workers and other frontline responders, public health messaging, as well as research. Moderna is the second vaccine in Kenya's program after AstraZeneca with at least 1.6 million people having received at least one dose and over 780,000 fully vaccinated as of 22nd of August, 2021. We shall gradually increase the number of vaccination posts from the current 800 to 3,000 facilities that will be offering vaccination. This Moderna vaccine batch is the first of the 3.5 million doses of vaccines set apart for Kenya from the United States government, including a further 1.6 million doses of Pfizer vaccines scheduled to be delivered mid-September. We are also setting up infrastructure that will ensure the deployment of the Pfizer vaccine when it comes, which requires the ultra cold chain storage, which is negative 70 degrees centigrade. While the country gears up to receive more vaccines to reach over 30 million people, many turned up to the healthcare facilities to get the job and also beat the GOK deadline of 23rd of August, set out for civil servants by the head of the civil service. At the Malindi Sub County Hospital in Kilifi County, many stood in line for hours with hospital staff saying they have been receiving less than a thousand doses of the vaccine during every dispatch against a huge turnout. <laughs> At the Cabernet Referral Hospital in Baringo, the situation was similar as thousands of teachers and security forces tried to beat the deadline issued. As early as 6 a.m., teachers from as far as Chemolingot and Barwesa, both over 100 kilometers away to the only COVID-19 vaccinating center in Cabernet, were there to get vaccinated. You see, with a lot of... Uh... Uh, propaganda that has been going on. There are so many things which have been said. So most of uh, the residents have had problems deciding on whether to take the vaccine or not. The disciplined forces who were deployed to flash out bandits in Baringo South were not left out of this move 
Many say that they have been trying to get the vaccine since Friday. In Garissa, hundreds of civil servants turned up at the office of the county commissioner. Several civil servants are now urging the government to extend the deadline by one week to ensure all civil servants are vaccinated. Leila Mohamed, NTV. As many Kenyans consider grabbing a jab, as my producer Sheila puts it, let's now see the latest on the coronavirus situation in Kenya. The positivity rate today stands at 13.3% as Kenya recorded 619 new infections from 4,647 samples tested, raising the total cases to over 229,600. The death toll has risen to 4,528 after 31 new deaths, all being late reports from facility records audits in July and August. 1,437 more patients have recovered, and now the total recoveries stand at over 213,400. We wish quick recovery to those who have been admitted and that are on home-based care. So far, 1.6 million people have received the first dose of the AstraZeneca vaccine, with at least 781,000 being fully vaccinated. Addressing this issue this evening, the president, in that extensive interview he gave, called on Kenyans to get vaccinated against COVID-19. Let's hear more. It is most unfortunate that despite all of that, when vaccines came online, the developed countries exercised what we are unashamedly calling vaccine apartheid because despite all the arrangements and agreements that we had in place vaccine nationalism came into effect they decided to hoard and to look after themselves and ignore the rest of the world it was a double blow for us on the african continent because on top of that the uh, uh, facility that had been contracted to supply us, India itself, that was part of us, said they were no longer going to be supplying until they supply their own people when they are hit with the second wave. So we were left stranded, right? Despite the fact that we had never been better prepared, despite the fact that we had put our resources, mobilized all the resources that were necessary to begin immediate rollout. So, where do we, uh, where are we and where are we going from here? We are still in that fight of ensuring. And we're now looking forward with uh, South Africa now coming on board. We are working on getting our fill and four, uh, uh, form and fill uh, um, uh, facility here in Kenya. But South Africa already has theirs on board. We are hopefully now going to start getting a steady supply of our own vaccine and hopefully we may be a month or two months late, but be able to meet our 10 million target of the most vulnerable, which will be a key indicator for us now fully opening up uh, the economy. And we're hoping to achieve that in the shortest possible time. But Mutumai, as you have said, it is based on availability. Everything that we're getting, we are pushing out. Yeah? And uh, we have said vaccine is going to be free because we want to ensure that there is no element or capacity of people taking advantage of this shortfall yeah? for, 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 for making uh, deals here and there. Vaccines will be made available to all our citizens across board freely. I think the second point that you raised, Mutuma, is about those who are hesitant. Um, we are not going to force anybody. It will be your decision whether you want to take or not. But I truly, truly would encourage, especially those who are in that most vulnerable bracket, those 50 or even 45 and above, those with comorbidities, that it is essential that you be vaccinated. 
And I will appeal to all those. I think we, we, we have now enough research done yeah? that, that has actually proved that uh, these vaccines are actually helping as opposed to harming. 